So a project I've wanted to do for a while now is rebuild, rebuilding the spindles on one of these early style decks. Uh, these decks would be anything from the early 60s when the 110 came out uh, with the 38 inch deck or the model 38 deck. All the way up through, let's see here, there was the third model 39 deck, a 41 inch deck, a I think there was a 44 in there somewhere, 46, uh, there was a 47, model 47 deck. Uh, all those, and then the 50 inch deck on the 318s, all of those decks had non-greasable bearings uh, for spindles. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how I replace them. Uh, there is lots of different ways to do this. Um, chances are it is not going to be easy uh, because these decks are so old. Um, you will, I would highly recommend a press of some type. Uh, even if you go to Harbor Freight and get a little cheap, like 10 or 12 ton press, um, I think you can have, you can, those can be had for like 120, 150 bucks. Uh, that'll be perfectly fine for this. I know that I think the most pressure I've ever put on one of these spindles with my press is somewhere in the neighborhood of like two tons. And um, it just, that's just because it was so rusted. And I mean, it was in a lot worse shape than this one right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera up. Uh, we're going to take the spin, one of these spindles out. And uh, then we'll work on disassembling the spindle. Or once we get the spindle out, then we'll work on disassembling the spindle. And then we'll replace the bearings. And we will go from there. Okay, so we're going to focus our efforts on this outside spindle here. Um, what I've got is a 5 8 uh, socket on my uh, impact driver here. We're going to take our bolt off. Oops, that's the wrong way. Nope, that was the right way. So after we've taken the bolt out, we're going to take the blade off. Set that off to the side. You know, you probably want to turn these decks over. I'm doing it like this. Uh, simply because I think it helps you kind of see what I'm doing. Back here, we'll go ahead and flip it over so you can kind of see what I'm doing instead of me holding it up. Hopefully, yeah, you can still see it. So now I have the correct socket. Now these are carriage bolts, so they should, if they're loose enough, they should come off. Now what I do is I always, when I'm rebuilding these decks, I generally always, uh, I was hoping to get the um, washers off. I generally always use new hardware when it comes to redoing these decks. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to take and I don't want to come out. Sometimes you just got to hit it with a hammer because it's wedged itself in there. Like that. So there is our spindle. So now we get to take it apart. All right, so I figured I'd start by talking about the overall structure of these spindles. So we've got here is we've got the spindle that I just took out of the deck. Um, and this spindle, so the two outboard spindles are broken down as follows. We have the bolt, the washer that holds the blade onto the mandrel, um, and so the blade goes onto the mandrel. The mandrel then sits on the um, housing. Now in this housing there are two bearings. There is one bearing at the top and one bearing in the bottom. So if you look in there, one bearing sits in between See that little line right there? That's where the C-clip goes. There's two C-clips per uh, housing. So one bearing goes in there, and another bearing goes right in the top here. So the two bearings sit in there like that. Mandrel sits there just like so. This is a keyed shaft. So the key goes in here like so. And this 
goes over the top, and then a nut goes on like so. And that is how the uh, spindle is assembled. Couple of notes, this nut coming off can be somewhat difficult. I'll try to show you, because uh, I mean, obviously you got something that spins. Uh, you know, you're ruining a lot of these pulleys uh, trying to get the pulley off. Uh, you cannot just press this spindle right out, um, because if you did, you would shear the uh, half moon key. And so there is a spacer that goes in there, um, that goes, fits over the shaft. I'll show you that when we do the assembly. Now the difference, the middle spindle, which this is the drive spindle, so it's got two uh, two pulleys on the main hub here. Also, the housing is a bit different. The housing is a bit taller. If you look at that right there, that has to do with how the housing sits in the deck. And also, the mandrel itself is a little taller, along with the spacer is a little taller. If we put these two parts up next to each other, you see how that works right there. Um, so, if you're buying these parts on eBay or something, make sure. You know, you get in the right mandrel, so on and so forth. Lots of folks like to just label random parts and say they're good and they fit everything when, when in fact they don't. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take apart this spindle here. The first thing I'm going to do is take this nut off. After I take this nut off, we're going to try to figure out a good way to get this pulley off. Um, this pulley can come off lots of different ways. For really fortunately, when I took this one apart, literally a brass hammer and about... 18 tap, 18, 20 taps, and it came off. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be that lucky with this one, but we're gonna try. Um, some of the newer style decks actually have holes in the top. I don't think this one, I suppose you could put a screw down in there if you wanted to, to pull it off. In fact, we might try that, although that's a really tiny screw or bolt. Um, but some of the newer style decks, like the 52 or the 54 and the 62, they have holes on the top of their pulleys to pull those uh, pulleys off uh, when you're ready to take them off the deck or take them off of the gearbox. Uh, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna set up the camera and we're gonna work on getting this apart. All right, so we're gonna take this nut off, uh, either an inch and a quarter or a 28 millimeter will work. If you got an impact gun, I would highly encourage you to use it. Uh, sometimes just doing this on the bench and holding it will work, sometimes it will not. Just like that. So like I said, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it'll not. Um, really just kind of try it out, figure out what you need to do first. So now what we've got to do is we've got to get this pulley off of this mandrel. There's might be a couple different ways to do that. I think the first way we're going to try is I'm just going to hold it upside down. I'm sorry, this is off camera. This will be a little quieter. All right, we almost got it off. Ah, there we go. So now, sometimes you can even rock it back and forth and pull it off by hand. Just like that. So now we have our mandrel out. Wow, so look at how much rust is on top of those bearings right there. There's absolutely no grease. Uh, hopefully the camera, yeah. So there's absolutely no grease in those bearings. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this key out and we'll go over to the press and we will press the mandrel out of the bottom of the spindle housing. All right, so we've got our spindle in our press here. What we're gonna do to start with I'm gonna put the nut back on there to protect the um, mandrel itself. I'm not gonna hook up the air to the press because this is a pretty simple job. It just takes me a little bit to do. And we're gonna press it out. What I should do is I should build a custom 
uh, a custom setup for this so it's a little bit easier for me to do this but because <clears throat> there's not very much bite on this far side of the mandrel over here but like I said you don't often need very much pressure to get these mandrels out and you can hear it's already popping and there's absolutely no pressure on the um, pressure gauge here and on the press you have to keep in mind this is a 40 ton press and so my stroke is very limited with each pump of the hydraulic handle um, you know other presses are going to be very different from this you can do this with a hammer if you choose uh, you just have to be very very careful not to damage the top of the threads um, they're very likely to be damaged if you're not careful obviously there's no way I can leave the nut on there the entire time um, so something that we have to be aware of is, is still the threads even when I get this pushed down a little bit I'm actually going to use a bolt which should be fine for the limited amount of pressure we're going to put on it. I would not recommend this if you're going to put an excessive amount of pressure on this thing. <clears throat> Bolts can bend and break and <clears throat> if you actually had a, a press job that was um, that required any substantial force in this particular case the force is just consistent but if you had a press job that required any force whatsoever any substantial force I would not recommend doing what I'm doing right now you need proper adapters and everything else but in this case it works just fine and also we have to remember that's a grade 8 bolt right there um, that I just put on the top of it there. It's one of the bolts out of the transaxle of the 318. Holds, uh, I believe it holds the axle housings to the differential. I think we're almost there. Pop out the bottom here in just a minute. There we go. So there's our spindle or our mandrel. That's over there now. So there's everything we need. Now we can move forward. All right, so here's a part that can be an absolute pain in the butt. This little C-clip right here. There's about a half million different ways to do it, and you're probably going to pinch your fingers in all the cases. So what I try to do is get it loosened up on both sides. I like multiple different screwdrivers. And sometimes it's just a matter of getting in there and cleaning out some of the crud that's in there. Once I've pried it away, I'll take the other screwdriver and stick in there. That gives me a way that I can pry it, pry it up. The only problem is, is you got to do this about five times before something actually stays. Sorry for my hands, I just have to do this as I go here. Sometimes these things will come flying out, so you probably should wear eye protection. And I popped it back in after all that. Go figure, right?
There we go. This is what I was trying to do. Notice I said fly out where eye protection. That is exactly why. So there's our uh, C clip. Now we can take and we can push both these bearings out. Now there's no clip in the top there, but there is a um, there is that spacer like this right here in between the two bearings. So what we need to do is we need to get a punch and uh, a hammer, and then we'll remove the bearings from there. All right, so I got my punch. Now this just happens to be a brass punch. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if I can get that uh, sleeve off to the side. Like so. You just try to tap that bottom bearing a little bit. Which it doesn't look like it wants to easily come out. Go figure, right? So what we're going to do, so I'm going to set up a little workstation here. Like so. We're going to see, actually we're going to flip it over, see if we can get the bottom bearing out first. Huh. Tell you what, this, this bearing housing is very rusted in there. There is not much uh, in the way of lubrication. All right, go figure. As soon as I turn the video camera off, I finally got that uh, spacer in there to move off to the side. You can see it kind of offset in there. Now I can knock the bearings out with these. So you can see it starts to move down there. Okay, there's one. Our spacer came out with it. But yeah, see all the moisture, all that rust on the inside of that bearing? No good. Now the easy one. Once you got one of them out, the other one's super easy. So 30 seconds of device and I had it out. There's what the bearing looks like. It doesn't even turn. Oh, well, kind of. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, granted, I didn't do it any favors getting it out. But, I mean, you can actually see the, the ball bearings in there um, behind the seal. So, what I'm going to do, that's the end of part one. I'm going to get all these parts cleaned up. And then, uh, part two will be putting the new bearings in and reassembling the entire spindle. Thanks for watching.